morning. I'm in the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 3. Commit your works to the Lord and your works will be established. If you want to know more about who you are with Christ God, Jesus, our Savior, King, Messiah, Creator all alone, then get busy in your own life, in your heart, in the way you are thinking about who you are as a child of God's. If you want to know more about who He is, then get busy in your life, with your work, with your time frame, and with people around you and help them to get things done in their life too, spiritually, as well as physically, mentally, emotionally, and perhaps even financially. You might be able to help out a little bit there. Maybe offer them a position, grant them some money for a period of time, or just give it to them to help them to get through a situation that they are in financially that they need at that moment in time. Let your work be satisfying before God Almighty Jesus. I can tell you this, I'm happier than I have ever been before. Up until this moment in time, I had questions, I had doubts, I had fears, I had progression of anger and the stimulation of frustration and impatience and just doubt that just was continuously there in my life. I still have some of those things going on in my life. And in my work, I'm here to do what my God Jesus tells me what to do. It's forever for him and it's for now for me. Because right now I'm here to pray for those around me, but at the same time I'm not really out motioning those around me who are out there in this world doing something they should not be doing. How can I do this here on this world right now all by myself? Well, I can't. God Jesus is with me and he is with each and every person in this world right now. Through the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit, who is God with each and every one of us right now right here in this world, on this earth, to be here in the exactness about who he is and was as Jesus Christ, God, Savior, and Creator all alone. And yes, infinite God, before he became God, Savior, and Creator all alone, Jesus, with the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit, and yes, our Heavenly Father, God, Jehovah. The miraculousness about all of this is simply that we're here to be with God, Jesus, in our work. And our work is to simply say he is believed on by him who sent him. That is God Jehovah who sent Jesus Christ, our God and Savior alone. He is the one who sent Jesus down here to die on the cross for the world's sins. If you want to know more about Christ God Jesus, then get into the Word of God, the Bible, the Book of Life. That is the Word that God continuously tells me to read, accept, to absolutely preview it and review it for me, for myself alone. For others around me to know more things about who they are as a child of God. To absolutely not go in any place or invent something that not, that's not true about the Word of God in the Word of God itself. But to remain silent in my heart, letting God Jesus do all of the talking for me when I pray and ask all things in Jesus Christ God's name alone. That is His name. That is how we should be praying and asking things from God, Jesus, to help us to get further in our heart, mind, and situation in our life, spiritually, and in the values of who He is as living God, deity alone, infinitely, first, and then our God, Creator, and Savior for eternity. People say, I'm not right about some of the things that I say about God's Word in the Bible, but I know I'm right on. I know that sometimes when God gives me the words from him alone through the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit, who is God with each and every one of us right now in this world, I know he has given me the truth. He has given me the mild effort to be with me because I'm not with him much sometimes, but when I am, he is with me in a mighty way. And this is one of those times he is with me in a mighty way. Through the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit, God can seek out those who are willing to spend the time, more time, with God Jesus to know more about who He is as living God, Creator alone. Salvation is not my heart in my mind or thinking too much. I know I'm already saved, but at the same time, I want many around this country, America, and in this world to be absolutely knowing and believing without a doubt that Jesus Christ is God Almighty alone, all by himself with God Jehovah and the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit, who is God with us right, new, right now, who has been sent to us from God Jesus and great God Jehovah. Because the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit, is the only way 
to know and to believe who Jesus Christ is as the Son of God, who was God himself in the flesh, who did die on the cross for the world's sins and was risen from the dead on the third day. No one else could have done what he does, what he has done. No one else can do that now. They don't have to. And number one, we can't because we are not godlike. We are not gods. We are God's children, his creation. Therefore, Jesus Christ, our God, Savior, and Creator alone, God Jehovah's Son, who is Jesus Christ God, and by his name alone, Jesus Christ God came down here to do his work all alone. But yet, he was with his Heavenly Father on a daily basis all of the time. How could this be? Because he is God, and with God, all things are possible. He is part of of the presence of three. By name alone, they are Jesus Christ God, our God and Savior alone, creator, redeemer of all in this world. God Jehovah is the Father, the heavenliness about who he is as God alone in spirit, but with Jesus Christ, his Son, alone down here as God himself in the flesh, man of flesh, God and spirit. The holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit, has been sent to us. Jesus spoke about this in the Bible. Before he left, he told his disciples and many that he would not leave this world and leave us here as orphans. He would send us a comforter, a teacher. His name is the Holy Spirit. Now God has me call him the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit, because he wants me to say it more and more and more in my life, to know that I can become more holy like God Jesus. How can this be? Because I'm a sinner and so are all down here in this world. But God says in the word, his Bible, the word, be ye holy, for I am holy. It is in God's word, be ye holy, for I am holy. No one else can do what Jesus Christ, our God and Savior, did. I'm not a sinless person. I am a sinner. But I have been here retrieved into my life to be absolutely conceiving and meaning what God, Jesus, wants me to understand for me alone. Now, I don't know about you. Or anyone else on this world I know that so many around this world and this moment past all the way up until the return of God Jesus will confess Jesus Christ as living God Savior and Creator alone with God Jehovah and the holiness of who they all are the Holy Spirit as one living God in the presence of three but still infinite God first and always and our God Savior and Creator alone throughout eternity how do I know all of these things if I have never spoken to anyone and no one has taught me these things from their own voice, their own time, their own talent, their own gifts. Well, the word of God is speaking to me a lot and the word of God became flesh and dwelt among us. His name is Jesus, Jesus Christ, God, the son of God, who was God himself in the flesh, who did die on the cross for the world's sins and was risen from the dead on the third day. And he rose himself on the third day with God, Jehovah and the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit. How? Because with God, Jesus, all things are possible. Matthew 19, 26. I believe everything my God tells me. I know my mind thoughts, my mind thoughts get in the way sometimes when I'm away from God too much and I've got a lot of things going on in my life and I'm thinking about a lot of things. But when I settle down and I pray and ask God Jesus for the words to come from him alone through the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit, more loud, clear, and precise and imprinted in my heart, soul, spirit, and mind, and that he would put these words into a beginning, middle, and ending contract, finishing debate, or statement, or absolute answer about what I'm looking for in my life at that moment in time. It will be a question from me to God, Jesus, and I always pray and ask all things in Jesus Christ, God's name alone. And when he tells me enough, I know that I can do the right thing better. And if I'm not totally understanding what the real answer is, then I have to go within my heart, mind, spirit, and soul and deal with it in my way of knowing that God Jesus is with me to deal with things better. But the most part and the best part is this. He is with me all of the time, 24 seven. He is with each and every one of us until the end of time on this world, up until his return, when he collects all periods of minds, soul, spirits, and the hollowing and the absolute allowing of people saying that I'm here for a moment in time. That means this. When I say periods, it means that people have been here, spontaneity, kind of like in a way of saying, I'm here, I'm gone. I'm here, I'm gone. Meaning their heart is with God for a bit, a few seconds maybe, and then they're out of their heart, into their thinking, out into the world, 
doing their thing, having fun, and being with God, Jesus, not hardly at all. doesn't mean they're not saved. It just means it's a period of time for them to be thinking about God, but their work, activity, and other things going on in their life, stuff has kept them away from God. And their doubts about God has never left them. They just don't spend amounts of time in their heart to be with God. So God has limited the limited it down to periods, meaning they will be raptured up with him into heaven because they truly believe in God and Jesus Christ is God. So that's the best part. That's a good thing. That's a fantastic thing. Awesome, miraculous thing. But at the same time, there's many down here who will be spending their time, many more times out there doing sermons, studying the word of God, writing books, doing TV shows or movies about God's word. And they will all be absolutely worthy. Even if we never say or mention God's name or one word about the Bible to someone else in our lifetime here. And it might be spent doing other things on purpose because we just don't want to spend that time trying to understand God's way for us to do things from the word of God because we don't understand it that much, but we understand his word enough to believe in him as living God, Savior, and creator alone, Jesus. And his heavenly father, God, Jehovah, who is God with them all including the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit, in the presence of three. But by name alone, they're in, they are in the presence of three. That's it. Not three gods, not three spirits, not three entities, and not three persons. They are God alone, period. In the presence of three, as still one living, infinite God all alone. And our God, creator, and savior alone throughout eternity. I want people to know that there is a difference between the infinite God whom I worship all of the time daily and my God, Savior and Creator alone, whose name is Jesus Christ, our God and Savior and Creator all alone. So I'm going to repeat myself because I want you to hear it enough times in your heart, mind, and thinking when you are watching something like this on YouTube or hearing someone else speak his name like that. Remember who he is. He is God first almighty. And his name became with us after he was born into this world by his mother Mary. From her womb, he became a presence in this world. But many didn't know him. Many could not see him. Many did not wonder about him because they didn't know he was here. He had to be kept practically a secret for a long period of time because many were seeking him to murder him, to dispose of him and his worthiness about who he is and was as God's son, God himself in the flesh. Can you imagine how his mother Mary must have felt when her son was hanging there on the cross for her, her sins, the world's sins? I can tell you this, it would be a mighty loss to have such a loving, wonderful son, a perfectness, in him and she knew the love and the quality of who he is and was when he was with her but yet he passed away on that cross and she knew that her time with him was limited and she always knew that her time with him at that moment when he passed away on the cross would be done would be finished it would never be the same and so therefore i thank my god jesus every single day that no matter what people like mary gave Christ God Jesus, the opportunity to be here in this world as man himself in flesh, but God in spirit. He was birthed from her womb, but he is still her God, Savior, and Creator alone. But first, he is still her God alone infinitely. It's a miraculous, wonderful thing to think about. It's fantastic to wonder about who she was, how she was when she was with God Jesus, her son, knowing who he was as Messiah, but not completely understanding The whole absolute situation of how it was all going to go down in the perfection of God's promise, sending us a Messiah, the Lamb of God, someone who is going to be our protector, our Savior, our Creator. We didn't know about that right now, about who He was, but He is and was our Creator also. Remember, when I'm here reading these words from my heart and giving them to you here online or to someone personally, one-on-one or a few around me or a sermon in front of people, I know that they will not and do not understand everything that I say. But I can tell you this, when I'm here saying something for my God, Jesus, I mean it with all of my heart, soul, spirit, and my mind, knowing that when he gives me these words, all of these things from him alone are simply from him, knowing who he is as Christ, God, Savior, and Creator alone. I'm not going to do anything to mess up my relationship and my heart and my spirit and my time here with him right now, which is preciously never enough here online. But in my life, it's longer. But still, in this world, it's always shortened because of sin. Because of sin. And when we are here, we can be in an accident or become ill 
and pass away from old age, it's never long enough, however it might end. And I'm looking forward to heaven for eternity because I will be there eternally with my family and friends and many, many, many from this world who have passed away and gone home someplace to be around heaven or close to heaven, in heaven. I'm not sure how that all works. And also many from this moment forward until the return of God, Jesus. I am looking forward to eternity, no longer feeling that fear of knowing that I might doubt or say something wrong in a sin and say, I'm so sorry and apologize to God, Jesus, and ask forgiveness for my sins again and pray and ask it all in Jesus Christ, God's name alone. And just remembering to know that when I'm here, I become angry. And sometimes I become angry in a way that positions myself and direct it towards our God, my God, my creator, my savior, God alone, deity, infinite God alone. And that makes me wholly, honestly awful. It makes me feel awful. It doesn't make me feel holy. It makes me feel horribly. That's the word I wanted, horribly awful. When I'm here saying the things about what God is, who God is with me and who he is as infinite God, and I listen to who he is as God alone with me. I know I'm going to make mistakes. I know I'm still a sinner. I pray and ask forgiveness for all of my sins on a daily basis. I always pray and ask it in Jesus Christ's name. I ask all prayers in Jesus Christ, God's name when I end them. And I want God to be with me as much as I know he desires to be with me. But there's many more around this world who can be with God more, like myself, and many who won't, and many more who will be with God more. Why? Because he's with them more because of a ministry they have out there on a stage, writing books, doing movies, on TV, radio. They do sermons. They talk about God's word. And they're there for God, Jesus alone, to, to uh, share God's worship and the value of who he is as living God, King alone. So what does that have to do with everything that I just read in this scripture? Commit your works to the Lord and your works will be established. That's Proverbs 16.3. It means this, that when you continue your work in life, your first work above and beyond all things in this world, anything and everything you can think of, worship and believe on Jesus Christ, our only true living God, Savior, and Creator alone. That is in the Bible. Believe on him who was sent. That's what he told people in front of him whenever he was doing a sermon and these people around him were so excited about God and his word and the works they wanted to do for him, they said, Lord, what can we do in works to do your work? And God, Jesus said to them, do what you're doing now. Believe on him who was sent. And that is our God, Savior, and Creator all alone. I don't want to emphasize anything more except for this. I know that my works are not here to be exploited as much as I think they might be, but at the same time, they could be. Now, that's a suggestion and a question all at the same time in my heart. I don't know what's going to be. I know I know this. I take my life one day at a time, but I still plan for the future because that's what the Bible says. Plan for today and tomorrow, but tomorrow you don't know about. So live through this day with God Jesus in your heart, with God Almighty, knowing that you know who he is as your God, Savior, and Creator all alone, but infinite God first. Worship him and worthy him in your life all of the time, as much as you can. That is your first above all work amongst everything else going on in this world and in your own life personally. Know him, believe on him, Jesus Christ, our God and Savior. That is your work. When things are added into your life and you go out and serve people, God's children, his sons and daughters, his creations, you know that's another work God is going to bring to you, but you are already saved through the blood and life and value and righteousness about who he is as living God, Savior, and Creator alone, the Son of God. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever that whosoever believed on him can has life eternal. That's in John 3, 16. You have to know, every single time I'm saying these things, I know these things are of truth and fact. Nothing I have said in this moment past, or right now and from this moment forward, with God Jesus with me in my heart through the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit, who is God with each and every one of us on this world right now. I have never spoken about the value of me. I downsize me to a minimum, minimal, tiny, teeny, tiny person that is nothing unless my God Jesus tells me something to say from him alone, who was God Jesus to me, from him through the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit to me. He gives me the words. He tells me what to say. I say it the way he tells me to say it because it's me. It's my personality. It's the words he knows I am going to use and know how to use perfectly for him. 
It's God's will to know who you are with him. It's not me. It's not you to know me. And it's not me to know you. It's God Jesus to know you. And it's you to know God Jesus. When you draw close to God, God will draw close to you. James 4, 8. I will mention these verses, certain ones, different times throughout sermons that I do. Many times over time. And I have already. Remember, the timing for God Jesus to be with each and every one of us is his will and desire to pick you, to choose you to be in salvation with him, to do his work, to believe on him. First of all, who was sent Jesus Christ, our God and savior. That's your first work. That's your only work. If you were to pass away after you confess your sins, ask forgiveness for your sins, and then you passed away asking God Jesus to be with you, you would be saved without any other work going on in your life. Many people have done that over time since the beginning of life. The value of a heart of our heart, mind and spirit is just simply here to be with God Jesus more and more and more and to know who he is, to believe on him who was sent to die on the cross for the world's sins. Our savior God creator all alone Jesus. We already know who he is. Romans 12:3 says it for God has given to each man the measure of faith. So why not Take God's word, put it into your heart, put it into your thoughts, your mind, the way you're thinking, your heart, soul, and spirit, and everything that you do in your life. Let him be your priority work because he is already. It says so in the Bible. It doesn't say it that way, but Jesus says it in another scripture when he told his disciple or his children in front of him when he was doing that sermon to them. What can we do in works to do your work, God, Jesus, or Lord? And he said, you already are. Believe on him who was sent. That's your work. Anything else that accumulates in your life to serve God in a miraculous way through love and peace, helping another person, taking them shopping, helping them clean their house, helping them to move, downsize, give someone some money, taking them some groceries, cooking for them. Anything you do, babysitting, you can be doing that too. But God says your work is right now doing what we are doing by believing on him who was sent. So remember in the precious value of who Jesus Christ is as living God, Savior, and Creator all alone, I do not know all of these things and all of the information does not come into my heart, spirit, mind, and soul while I am thinking it, while I am thinking about a lot of things going on in my own personal life because that can be scattered about a lot of information and stuff. But God, Jesus, narrows my heart down, my thoughts, and the words come in from him alone through the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit. And he gives me He gives me those things to think about, to say. And he gives me the words to how to say it in a way that helps me to get into a position of knowing him better. So I can say it more about who I am as his child, creation, daughter, and servant, as well as you. But you have to do it with God and Jesus alone in your own time. And he will give you the words to say in a sermon, to a person, pray and ask God Jesus for you the words. When someone says, I don't know if Jesus Christ is God, or I don't know if I believe in God, and they're willing to listen to what you have to say, then pray and ask God Jesus silently to give you those words as that, as that person is standing there in front of you and talking perhaps. Use that quiet time in your heart to ask God Jesus quietly, what words can I give them to help them to move into a position of believing in you, God Jesus, and being saved by you? Pray and ask that in Jesus Christ God's name alone when you ask him that. Pray and ask all things in Jesus Christ God's name alone after you finish your prayer. And let God be the glory for all of it. And then say always, always, always thank him for all prayers asked in his name. And thank you and thank him for everything that he's given you in your life spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, and financially. He can still heal you in all of those areas of your life. Maybe not, not at the same time. Maybe not really fast, but he can still heal you. He will do it with his own way, his own time, his own miraculous gift and giving to you what it is you need the most in your life. And then he goes from there. Is it financially first maybe? Or spiritually? Physically? Is there emotional trauma going on in your life? Or mentally something that needs to be dealt with with medication or counseling? All of these things can team up together become to become a nuisance in our own life personally. And then we stay away from God thinking we're not good enough or we're too bad, we're mean, we're cruel, we're angry. We just don't feel like we want that heart of love with us to give it back to someone else around us because we are so 
in ourself, knowing who we are as a child of God and we're angered by it and we're depressed or oppressed and just not wanting to be with someone who says, oh, don't you want to know more? Well, maybe you just want to be by yourself. And the best place for you to be is by yourself in a room, in your car, all by yourself saying, God, I need help. Please, God, take this emotion away from me. I'm stressed out. I'm tired. I'm depressed. I'm angry. I feel oppressed. I feel all of these emotions that are not good. And I just don't want to do anything. I just want to go home, crawl in bed, and just go to sleep and stay there for a while until I feel better. Well, I pray that you will. And I pray also that you take that time to say, God, please help me. Jesus, God, please help me. Help me to get over this anger, this frustration, this impatience, whatever it is that's going on. The emotional healing is the most out there right now going on inwardly to help people to know that they are worthwhile, that they are still worthy in themselves to be a child of God, a son and a daughter. Never forget who we are, who you are. You are a child of God Almighty. He can do all things with you. He can do all things for himself, for his glory alone, but he wants to help you to be with him more, to glorify him, to worship him in a way that's honoring him. When you feel it in your heart, mind, soul, and spirit, all at the same time, there's nothing like it. But you need to be healed first. You need to know him as Jesus Christ, God and Savior alone. You need to know who he is first. You need to word, read the word of God. Promise God that you're going to be in the word of God on a daily basis or several times a week. Reading one scripture a day, a paragraph a day, one chapter a day is what I do. One chapter a day will get you through a discussion and some, and some type of emotional distress that's going to be of value to you that you will need to hear, that you will need to read into your heart, mind, soul, and spirit. And remember when I say that, I mean it because when I read one chapter a day in the Bible, the book of life, I know that I see something that is for me. It may be minimal, but still, if I'm not understanding totally how it is for me, I move forward. And the next chapter might show me more things and more of value to me to how I can be healed in my life, in all areas of my life mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally, financially, any area that could be going on in my life, I need taken care of. I need healed. I need strengthening in. And I don't want the fear of God with me all of, all of the time saying that I'm bad, so I'm going to be absolutely not wanted or not loved by God. I don't want that in my heart and mind thinking either because he, he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's how much he loves you. And Jesus Christ, our God and Savior, rose from the dead. That means that he broke the chains of bondage in our life to know him as creator, God, Savior, and creator alone. And his name is Jesus. Jesus Christ, God. Remember, when you pray, end all prayers in Jesus Christ, God's name alone, and say, thank you, God, Jesus. I don't know how this is all going to come out, but I'm putting my faith in you. It's going to get better and better and better. Ask him for the words. From him alone through the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit. And ask him to help you to put those words into a beginning, a middle, and ending prayer. For yourself or for those around you. Whether or not it's from a distance that you're praying for them or right there in front of you. Always ask God, Jesus, for those words from him alone through the Holy Spirit. Who is God with us all right now. Pray and ask all things in Jesus Christ, God's name alone. And watch your life begin to change. I know mine has. I know many of Millions of people's lives who have changed because of Christ God Jesus being our only God, Savior, and Creator all alone, but infinite God first. Remember, infinite God is for Him alone first only. We are here with God Jesus from this moment forward throughout eternity and throughout infinity, but infinite means God has no beginning and no ending. He is God all alone, period. There is no other to seek out and to worship none. Remember, when you are here, go with the only true living God, Savior, and Creator all alone. That's where you start. His name is Jesus Christ, the Son of the only true living God, Jehovah, and God, the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit. They are one infinite God all alone in the presence of three. And yes, still our infinite God alone, but He is our God, Savior, and Creator throughout eternity. Praise God, Jesus. I have infinity with my God, Jesus. From this moment forward, when I die, I still will be alive. I pray you will be with God, Jesus, 
and with all who believe Jesus Christ is living God, Savior, and Creator alone, and never let that heart be moved one way or the other, but just forward with Christ God Jesus in your heart, mind, soul, and spirit. Let Him be the enlightenment and the light in your way of living, in truth and love and patience, and not in any way that's a crime or bondage or thinking that you're not worthy and you put yourself down. Just be with Him more. Hear His words of absolute upliftness. Make your words in your heart, mind, and thinking up, up, up. And hear those beautiful words of God saying to you, I love you so much. Let's go out and have some fun. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. And for whoever you are, if you're not having fun right now, you will sometime in the future. Like from this moment forward, you will be healing spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, and financially. You will be healed and financially blessed. I know you need work. We all need work. We all need money coming in. If you are retired, I pray more money will be coming in from an area where you can keep track of it, making sure that you turn into taxes if you go over that limit that you have to be staying under to not pay taxes on it. But I pray and ask in the name and blood of Jesus Christ, our God, Savior, and Creator alone, that no matter what, we will all be giving, getting government checks for more into our social security and retirement is individual. So that's simply separate. But social security is an important value to all of us who have retired and will be retiring. So I pray that our government is going to be spending this money, not so much on other people around us, around America and into other countries, unless it's worthwhile for God to save for them to do that, then fine. But if not, I pray that people in office in our government situation, from the president all the way down to the lowest held political holding, that they will be saying, we need to give the American taxpaying citizens who are here legally as Americans to have higher and better quality of living of life and give them more money in their retirement checks. And I pray and ask all of these things in Jesus Christ, God's name alone, that it's going to happen, that it will happen for me and for all retired right now from this moment forward all the way up until the return of God Jesus and that it will not let up because the economy is not good and because our leaders from this moment past right now and up until the return of God Jesus will not be good to us so they will have to say this to keep the economy going we have to give the American people more money to spend so we can keep that economy going it's basically so simple I don't know why they haven't done that before given us all more money I like to spend money don't you praise God Jesus for these checks increasing in our retirement I mean, excuse me, in our social securities anytime soon from this moment forward. And this is October 2020. I pray it's going to happen soon. I pray and ask and all I pray and ask all of these things in Jesus Christ, God's name alone. And I claim that last part in Jesus Christ, God's name alone. Amen. God bless.